You got anything you want to say? Top of the video? Okay. Hello, my pretties. The witch is back. Welcome back to the Deity series. Today we're going to talk about Athena. Many believe that Athena existed prior to her Greek mythology as there seems to be reference to her in ancient Egypt and Crete and Libya, but with lack of uh, information we're going to go off of her Greek mythology and uh, origin story from there. There are two versions to the story of her birth. In one, Zeus swallows whole the goddess of counsel Metis while she was pregnant with Athena, and the other where Athena has no mother at all. Either way, Athena is then birthed, fully grown, in armor, from Zeus's head. Despite how insane that sounds, she is Zeus's favorite daughter. She is the goddess of wisdom and of war, specifically when it comes to skill and strategy, practical reasoning, and also the goddess of handicrafts, particularly when it comes to skills like weaving, sewing, or metalworking. But I've also heard cooking. Now, Ares is also a god of war, but where Ares is the bloodshed and violence part of war, Athena is the battle strategy side of it. But she does fight. In the Iliad, she has been told to fight alongside other gods and heroes. So she is, as she was birthed, in a full body of armor with a helmet and wielding a shield and a spear. She is particularly associated with birds, especially owls, but also sometimes is seen with snakes, either depicted on her cape or her shield, because of Medusa, who was a mortal woman who was serving Athena and had uh, relations with Poseidon, which Athena then um, was really mad about because she was not a virgin while she was serving her so she turned her into the Gorgon Medusa. Athena is also sometimes associated with spiders, either because of her ability in weaving or because of her particular distaste for them because of a, another story. A mortal woman named Arachne uh, boasted so much about her weaving abilities that she challenged Athena's weaving abilities. They had a weave off because of this offense to the gods, which ultimately leads to Athena turning Arachne into a spider to forever weave in that form. As you may have gathered, unlike our goddess Sneaks from the last video, Athena has a lot of lore and a lot to unpack. Athens is named after her because she was in a contest with Poseidon over be becoming the patron god of that land, and she produced the first olive tree, which the people found so beneficial that they declared her the patron goddess of Athens. Athena is also a virgin goddess. She has never been told to be take any lovers, which is also where the Parthenon gets its name. Athena the virgin, essentially. Parthenon. Parth is the Athena protected Hercules during his 12 labors. She fought in battles. She entered many contests and usually won. She blinded a man for seeing her naked. Each of her stories in depth would be a kind of long video on its own. So if you are working with Athena or plan to work with Athena, I do recommend learning about all of her stories more in depth. Not only because she is a goddess of wisdom and knowledge, so doing so is a devotional act in itself, but also so you know what is and is not going to fly with her. Athena is an amazing goddess for strong feminine empowerment. The fact alone that she is a feminine presence in ancient Greece that that is seen in full armor, battling, usually winning. It's a very strong feminist movement in an early time. She is incredibly protective. She can be a very healing and safe energy. She's empowering. She is wise. She will enact revenge on your behalf. She rewards loyalty. But while Athena is healing, she's not exactly nurturing. She does not take kindly to manipulation of any sort, and she has a bit of a temper. I'm sorry, Athena, I love you, girl, but you know it's true. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was a big yawn. As I mentioned, uh, good devotional acts for Athena are reading, uh, learning things, knowledge, especially knowledge about her. I think that that's 
Uh, one of the strongest ways that you can make a connection with her, especially, of course, with any deity, learning more about them is going to make you feel more connected to them. But because she is the goddess of wisdom, um, also strategy, uh, planning things. It does not have to be necessarily war, but uh, anything that you are planning as ahead, it could be a strategy for a project that you're working on. It's kind of like a battle, sort of. Uh, those sort of things can aid from her strength, from her presence, and can also potentially be devotional acts. When you think about deities and doing devotional acts or uh, what offerings are going to be, we tend to turn back to their stories and what their strengths are. Because she produced the olive tree in Athens, uh, she is great to work with olives, olive oil. Cooking with olive oil could be a way to strengthen a connection with Athena. If you are a craft person, you might also be an Athena person. Any crafts really, but uh, weaving, sewing, and metalworking seem to be uh, her strong suits. Creating things in her honor, creating things as a uh, devotional item, creating things that are inspired by her. Just learn from Arachne and don't say that you are better than her at it, but make something that is in her honor, something that you're like, hey, I know that you're the best, but uh, I made this because you inspire me, and I think that that will do great. If you can't tell, I am a little bit intimidated by Athena. So reading, knowledge, olives, olive oil, uh, sewing, crafting, what am I missing? Owls. Because of her association with owls and the owls association with wisdom, learning about owls, finding out if there are owls in your area. Um, if Athena is calling to you, you might actually notice more owl motifs or actual owls. I have had a few actual owls outside of my own house fairly recently. It's like she knew this video was coming. So decorating with owls, acknowledging owls, uh, there are tons of like owl associations out there that take care of and rehabilitate owls, donating to something like that if you want to do that in, in her honor, and finally having an altar to her. Her shield was often depicted as being royal blue and gold. Because she is a goddess of like heroic victories, she's often associated with gold. This could also translate into yellow yellows, oranges, and often sometimes emerald green is sort of thrown into the mix, I think, for its sort of wisdom associations. It's sort of grounded, earthy knowledge. So if you're looking for a Athena color palette for your altar, uh, these could be a potential uh, place to start. You can stay true to that color palette with your crystals, but you can also find uh, grounding or wisdom-based crystals. I personally have dedicated all of my lapis lazuli to Athena. Same for candles, royal blue, uh, yellow, orange, gold if you can find them. Other items you could put on an altar for Athena could be olive branches, olives, olive oil, shields, spears, or swords if you wanted to build an altar around one of those. Uh, sometimes I think of my athames as tiny little swords, books, owl figures or figurines or artwork, woven crafts, sewing, knitted items, anything that is metal crafted like jewelry or little tokens. Of course, finding something that is specific to each deity is beneficial in uh, learning about them, strengthening your connection to them. But I should mention that if you are just working with a couple of deities on a budget and you can't really afford to get all of these different things, white candles and clear quartz can be uh, dedicated to basically anything. Of course, if you go out of your way to acquire something or to create something uh, that is even stronger of a connection, but uh, don't go broke. Uh, you can build up your altar as you go. Even with a deity that is as uh, specific and intimidating as Athena can be, just the uh, process and thought and effort of anointing a white candle uh, with olive oil is enough. This video was a request in my comments, so 
If you have a deity that you would like me to cover, uh, put it in my comments. It could become one of the next videos in my deity series. If you got something out of this video, if you enjoyed it, please consider giving me a like so I know I'm doing an okay job. Please let me do an okay job for Athena. And if you haven't already subscribed because I've got more deity videos and a bunch of other content coming up. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!